Hi students, we're starting dictation with our common dictation reminders. Remember that you should try to write as much as you can. Of course, you're not going to be able to catch every word from every sentence, and that's really okay if you can't catch all of the words. That's why you're here, is to improve your ability to listen and interpret spoken American English. Remember that we always practice the sentences multiple times. The first few times, you'll hear the sentences fast, using my reduced spoken American English. If you can't catch it, wait until the second practice, when we're going to be slowing the sentences down, using our more clear pronunciation, and then making comparison between the clear pronunciation and the reduced pronunciation of American English. Remember to be patient. This is a difficult skill to improve upon. Um, also remember that this isn't about speaking like me. This isn't a pronunciation activity. This is about adjusting your ear and improving your ability to listen to and interpret spoken American English so that you can easier, so that you can have an easier time understanding people um, at your child's school, at your work, at the grocery store. Are you feeling ready? Let's begin. All right, today we've got six phrases. One of them should have a question mark at the end of it, so pay attention to your punctuation as you are doing your writing. Let's start with number one. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. Number two. She said they're going to be there, but I don't want to see them. She said they're going to be there, but I don't want to see them. She said they're going to be there, but I don't want to see them. She said they're going to be there, but I don't want to see them. And for myself, I would put an exclamation point at the end of that number two, because there's a strong emotion connected to the, I don't want to see them. Come to number three. You have to be sure that you can pick her up. You have to be sure that you can pick her up. You have to be sure that you can pick her up. You have to be sure that you can pick her up. Number four. It's been a lot of work. 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 Number five. It's going to get cold today. 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 Finally, number six. Don't you have to work this weekend? Don't you have to work this weekend? Don't you have to work this weekend? All right, come back to the top. Remember, 
One more time, each sentence we're going to go through. Don't stress too much if you can't get every single word. That's why we're here, is to improve our listening. Number one. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. Number two. She said they're going to be there, but I don't want to see them. Number three, you have to be sure that you can pick her up. Number four, it's been a lot of work. Number five, it's going to get cold today. And number six, don't you have to work this weekend? All right, I hope now that you take a moment to review, check your grammar. Um, don't worry too much about spelling. Remember that we use our technology to help us improve our spelling. Um, look over your sentences, see if they make sense, and then let's jump into this explanation. Okay, come to number one. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. Your brother will have to call. You hear your becoming this shortened form, your, your brother. Your brother will. Your brother will. Your brother will have to call. Your brother will have to call. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. You hear my word when and the following he, when he, when he gets home. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. And my word of get, there isn't a strong pronounced T. It's a held in, unreleased get when he gets home, when he gets home. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. Number two is pretty difficult. Uh, let me know in the comments how was number two for you. She said they're going to be there but I don't want to see them. She said they're going to be there, but I don't want to see them. A lot going on in this. This again is two sentences hooked together with the comma. Um, my first phrase, she said they're going to be there. There, my they are becoming there, T-H-E-Y apostrophe. She said they're going to be there. My going to, becoming gonna. She said they're gonna be there, but I don't want to see them. I don't want to. I don't want to. All of those T's are gone in my spoken pronunciation. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to see them. And even for myself, when I'm hearing somebody say this quickly, when I'm hearing somebody pronounce this quickly, I don't want to see him. My instinct is him or them. And I might even ask somebody him or them, depending on the conversation. Now, because in this sentence I have they are, they are going to be there. It makes more sense to have them at the end. They're going to be there, but I don't want to see him. If I was saying I don't want to see him, you would hear more of an im. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see them. I don't want to see him. But really, the difference between hearing them and him, both reduced down, is so small. It's very difficult to um, hear the difference in the pronunciation. And like I said earlier, I did put an exclamation point at the end of this sentence because it feels like it has a lot of emotion for me. But if you put here a period, it would be equally correct. All right, let's go on to number three. You have to be sure that you can pick her up. You have to be sure that you can pick her up. You have to be, you have to be. My you reduced down to ya, you have to, you have to. 
You have to. You have to be sure. This is a strange pronunciation between these words of that and you. This T at the end blends into the Y after it, and it sounds like that you, that you can. You have to be sure that you can, that you can go, that you can help, that you can, all that you can do, all that you can, all that you can do. The T blends into the Y and makes this sound like a CH. My word of can is almost always reduced down to kin. I can go. Can you go? Can you help? My word of can, I don't hear the strong a, ah, I hear kin, kin. You have to be sure that you can pick her up. And these three short words at the end, pick her up. They combine together, they link together, and I hear pick her up, pick her up, pick her up. You have to be sure that you can pick her up. Come to number four. It's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. I hope here that you put has because of the word been. I can't say it is been. I say it has been. It's been. My it has reducing to the contraction of its. A lot of condensing together, reducing together to become this. A lot of, a lot of. It's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. Number five. It's gonna get cold today. It's gonna get cold today. Again, this it's. Now this is it is because I say is with ing. Has with the past participle, the third verb, is with ing for my present continuous. It's gonna get cold today. Gonna from my going to. My get does not have this strong T. I hear the reduced, the held in, or the unreleased sound of the D. Get, it's gonna get cold. And because of the D at the end of cold, the T at the beginning of today blends into, it links into the D before. And I hear cold today, cold today. It's going to get cold today. It's going to get cold today. All right, our last one, number six. Now, number six was our question, so I hope you have the question mark at the end of number six. Don't you have to work this weekend? Don't you have to work this weekend? Don't you? We see again this T and Y, similar like when we had number two with, oh, up here with number three, that you, that you. Don't you pushing together and having this don't you don't you don't you have to work don't you have to work this weekend and when when i use a negative in a question the feeling is that i think the answer is yes i think you have to work and i'm asking you for confirmation i'm asking you to re-emphasize the information, don't you have to work this weekend? Maybe I see you being lazy, I see you relaxing, I see you doing nothing, and I think um, you should be working. And so my question becomes, don't you have to work? Let me know in the comments. Let me know which one was the most difficult for you, which one was easy for you. Um, let's come back one more time for each sentence. Number one. Your brother will have to call when he gets home. Number two, she said they're going to be there, but I don't want to see them. Number three, you have to be sure that you can pick her up. 
Number four, it's been a lot of work. Number five, it's going to get cold today. And number six, don't you have to work this weekend? All right, that's the end of dictation for today. I hope I'll see you later. See you next time. How'd you do on this dictation? How'd you? How'd you do on this dictation? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know which one was the hardest for you, which one you'd like to practice a little bit more of, or let me know if they were all feeling easy for you too. It's always good to look at your success as well as your difficulties. Finally, my student told me I'm supposed to tell you. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Have a good day. Bye.